All right. Um, I'm sorry it's been a while, but I've been a little busy. But uh, I'd like to show you how to set up a new uh, Minecraft server for 1.7. Um, I believe the latest is 1.7.3, but nothing has uh, changed dramatically. So the setup is uh, the process is still the same, but there's a few new properties I'd like to go over. Um, but first, we need to actually start setting it up, and I'll show you how to do that. First, head over to Minecraft.net. Um, over on the right under buy now you'll find the uh, download section go ahead and head over there at the bottom you'll find multiplayer beta server software we do not need the executable unless you're on windows and you can go ahead and do that um, we want the java deal which is down here if you cannot read or hear what I'm saying to type it out later on this is this little snippet that's right under the download link is exactly what you're going to uh, type to uh, start the server. So go ahead and write that down or just keep note of it. Uh, we want to right click this and save it. Um, I'm going to save it in my desktop. Uh, you can go ahead and close that window. We won't need it. Um, I'm going to drag this on over here. You're going to keep this where you want it and I'm just going to create a new folder to contain all the files it's going to create and you're going to need to manage it. I'm going to name it just Minecraft, I suppose. Um, and we're going to just go ahead and toss it in there. All right, now you need to start up Terminal. You can find this under your Applications folder. Um, for example, Applications, Utilities, and uh, if it ever loads, I suppose you'll find um, Terminal, which is down here. All right, and now you basically need to change the directory that it's currently in to that of this right here. So basically, um, let me pump up the size so you can actually read. Uh, we're going to type cd, which stands for change directory. Um, and use, what's it called? Actually, where are they? All right. Yeah, okay. cd desktop. And I have my folder is named Minecraft. And now that we're in there, we can find out by typing ls that the only file inside is Minecraft server.jar. And like I said uh, before, you'll have to start it up by typing that command. And that command, if you cannot read it, was, and I'm going to find out just once more to double check, it is, once you're inside, make sure you're inside for Java dash XMX 1024M that is the maximum amount of RAM you're going to allocate towards Minecraft if you have um, if you have under probably if you have two gigabytes or less you probably want to just give it 512 or maybe 256 um, and we want the XMS to be 1024M that is the minimum amount of RAM um, when you give it the maximum and the minimum the same amount, it means it always has that amount um, allocated towards the server. Um, then you want to type dash jar. Then we just want to type the uh, name of the Minecraft server.jar deal and then no GUI. So you don't have to run the Java applet, you just run it inside here. Now, more than likely, you're going to get a lot of uh, uh, warnings and stuff like that. It says it can't find a certain file. That's fine if you. Um, have just started the server for the first time it's just gonna write all those files for you and then it's gonna go ahead and create the new uh, spawn area and everything in the world but after you're finished with that and it comes to a stop and says done for example you're going to want to type stop it should tell you it's stopping the server and then it's saving some chunks or whatever then you should be returned to the prompt uh, that you that was at the beginning of the terminal after this, you can open up a folder or application subject text edit, and you can open up the server.properties file inside this folder, which is right here. So go ahead and open up something like text edit, and just basically drag and drop it in here, or I guess not. <laughs> drag and drop it on your um, dock icon, I guess, or just open it using text as it file browser. God, my mouth is all messed up today. Alright, now there's a whole bunch of a list of what the, each of these do and what other ones do 
on the Minecraft wiki, so I suggest you go there to find out more information. But for right now, just this basic stuff, it's real simple to figure out what each of these do. Most of them are self-explanatory, to be honest. Um, for example, level name. This is the name of the actual folder that it generates. You should not need to mess with that. Um, I suppose if you want to have several different worlds running where you have like maybe you want to work on this world to be something different you could just sit, stop the server and change the world level name to different things if you wanted to keep progress on one server different than another but whatever allow nether is self-explanatory if you want the nether to be on you can turn it on um, view distance I believe this when he enacted enacted this it allows you to keep a number of chunks um, set that sends to the player so if you have 10 it sends chunk, 10 chunks at a time to the player you can heighten this um, and lower this uh, from 3 to 15 10 though seems to be a good medium um, the, if you have any issues with lag or whatever I'd probably lower it to down to like 5 or 7 um, spawn monsters self explanatory change it to false to turn off monsters online mode people have asked me this if you're a pirate and you've pirated the game I really don't care about your moral stance and I don't I'm, I, I'm not getting into that water but uh, you can change this to false so you can run it with uh, people who have not bought Minecraft this is also if you get the error user is not premium it's because online mode is uh, true and you just set it to false on uh, spawn animals you can set to false I personally turn it off because they get annoying and they get trapped in walls and whatnot max players self-explanatory set it to 99 or 3 whatever you, you want server IP this is a lot of this causes a lot of trouble for people you should not have to put anything in um, so just leave it blank for now if you have issues you might have to go into your system preferences and find out what your IP address of your machine is and just set it to that and then try and connect into your own server if you have any other troubles basically just do trial and error um, do not ask me about what specific problems you may have unless it's something truly out of the ordinary as I get a lot of questions about how to do the same thing for and it's usually about this and most of them you could find out just by trial and error PvP is self-explanatory do you want player versus player combat on um, I generally set false but you know it's whatever people want level C you can actually give your you can generate a new world with a new seed if you want. So, example, I could type my name, Casey, or I could put in uh, crackers, or I could put in cheese, I don't know, and then make a new world with that seed. Um, server port, again, you should not have to mess with this unless your ISP or router or whatever specifically blocks this. Um, allow flight, um, You, I'm not entirely sure how this works, but... Uh, if you have a mod on the server that allows flight, if you put uh, true or false on this, you can actually allow them to use the flight with the server mod. Um, that requires third-party stuff, but for now, you don't need to mess with it. Uh, whitelist, um, you can actually have a specific set of people who can join, and you can just edit it through this little list right here. So, for example, if I put my name in here or my username or whatever and guy1 anyone who's not hacks or night or guy1 will not be able to join the server but that's only if whitelist is set to true if it's set to false it will not uh, won't worry about it at all um, but after you've fiddled with this and decided what to do um, you're pretty much set um, set up and ready to start playing um, there's nothing new that he's really added other than uh, view distance and allow nether. Uh, everything else seems to be the same. So you can go ahead and save that when you're finished. And basically head over to your terminal again and start it up with the same command. Now after it says done, we can actually try joining it. And hopefully Minecraft will cooperate because it's not having it's having issues lately. So whatever. heck happened there there we go all right now since the server is up we can go to multiplayer and I can type in my IP address which I think is you gotta give me a moment 
as I do not remember. I have not been in Mac land in a while. There it is. 10.0.1.6. And over here on the left, in the terminal window, you'll see that so-and-so is logged in at whatever IP address. And what do you know? It works. And I've gotten a few questions about, like, why can't I destroy the blocks at so-and-so at whatever. That's not lag. That is spawn protection. I believe you can turn that off through the use of mods and third-party stuff, but you want that on. You do not want that off. That way people when people spawn into your server, you won't griefers that like to build giant pits under the spawn to kill new players instantly will not be able to do that. But see, if you go off later into a distance, you can actually destroy blocks and pick up blocks. So don't panic and tell me you want that off, because trust me, you don't. Um, it's not a big deal. But anyway, you can also do several commands while inside the uh, Minecraft server. There's, you can turn people into OPs, which will be able to have admin-like powers, and you can do this simply by shutting down the server or in adding to the OPs list uh, a username, such as my name, um, Hanksonite, or you can just do it over here in the terminal window, like OP. So now, in the OPs list, you'll have my name. Yeah, self-explanatory. Now, over in this terminal window, you can also do slash help, I believe. Or, nope, just help. And it'll give you a list of commands you can do, such as you can teleport players to one place or another, tell players messages, save the server, say whatever, set the time, ban people, unban people, kick people, and make people admins and get rid of their admin status. And that's pretty much the limit to what you can do. Um, other than that, you're pretty much set. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not much else to running of just a basic server for a group of friends. Um, uh, what's it called? Now, after, let's stop that. People have had trouble saying, after I shut down the server and turn, close the terminal window, how do I start it? How do you think you do? You just start over doing the same thing. That doesn't mean you have to destroy all this progress. That just means you make a new terminal window. For example, all right, we got a terminal window here. It's a little bit big. What do you think you do? Do you, you type CD desktop Minecraft? Type that command again. Boom, you're done. You don't have to do. Please don't ask me a billion questions about unable to access jar. Well, that is exactly what happens when you try and do, for example, I made a new terminal window, all right, and instead of doing all that progress to get into the folder, I just typed, yeah, that's what's going to happen. If you're not in the same folder or the uh, path to the Minecraft server.jar and you try and start that command, it's not going to work. So you need to actually make the progress of going into that folder then oops, sorry, you type that command and it will work. So please pay attention to what you have to do to restart it once you shut down the server. And also, make sure when you shut down the server that you type stop beforehand and wait for it to tell you it's done. If you don't, you could lose progress or lose data that is important for your server to run. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much all you need to know. Um, you will need to know what your IP address is if you want to give it to people outside of your network. And you can do that very easily just by typing I can has with a Z IP.com. And that will tell you your IP address. Um, and usually you could just give this to your friend if you're if you know how to forward your ports on your router. Um, and they should be able to connect through your router or whatever if you don't even have a router to your server. Um, please don't ask me about how to set up the um, forward your ports. It's different for a little bit different for every router, and it's especially different for Apple computer or Apple airports. And it's pretty easy for the airport things. And it's pretty easy for all routers in general. But you need to look up the instructions on how to do it for your specific router and what firmware firmware it has. 
So please don't ask me about how to do this because that is something you can look up and probably learn how to do in 10 minutes flat. Um, it's not hard, trust me. All you need to really know is the IP address of your computer um, and how to access and log into your router or what you need to do. So don't don't ask me that, please. It, it's not hard to learn and it's quite simple to look up. All right. I hope this helped. Um, if I remember anything I missed or whatever, tell me and I'll try and get a video out for it. Um, I've been a little bit busy with a bunch of stuff, so don't get mad at me. <laughs> well, anyway, have fun and I hope this helps. And I guess watch my other videos if you actually find this interesting or anything else interesting. I'm trying to make something that's a little bit more tuned towards other games other than Minecraft. <laughs> um, but anyway, I guess have fun.